morning everyone so this will serve as our discussion for the first topic in our subject which is analytical chemistry so as you all know there are a lot of discipline or studies or other fields of chemistry one is we've already we've already discussed we've already you've already know the first field of chemistry which is general chemistry particularly on inorganic chemistry so aside from that we also have the so-called uh, another branch of chemistry or discipline of chemistry which is organic chemistry we also have a physical chemistry and of course the prerequisite or the continuation of inorganic chemistry which is the analytical chemistry that's why it is very important to know analytical chemistry for you as a future medical technology you will be um, going or involving or you uh, your job is involved in measuring some reagent measuring some uh, chemicals for some spe specimen so by that all of that you will be learning all of that by the means of analytical chemistry so with that let's start our discussion for this morning so this is particularly on the introduction to analytical chemistry so this part or this explanation is pertaining on introducing some topics or some uh, terms pertaining to the uh, the term that we will be talking about in analytical chemistry so i hope that along the semester you will be enjoying and as at the same time learn about different tools how to measure and different um steps on how to to measure a certain reagent to know a certain reagent we'll be talking about that in analytical chemistry so without further ado let's start our discussion so with that let's proceed on the review about what is chemistry as we all know chemistry is a study of matter including its composition structure physical properties and reactivity we have already discussed that in a, in our previous uh, previous topic pertaining to general chemistry i've already introduced to you what are what is matter and what are those composition and structure particularly on matter so if you will be having a virtual right now i will be asking with regards to the review but basically today hindi tayo makakapag uh, uh, virtual because of some instances circumstances that uh, happen in your community but i understand that one that that your community is having this problem about the um, electricity so don't worry with that i understand so to continue chemistry also is a field of science that um uh, focuses on the different um, chemical reactions so I've already discussed also what are those chemical reactions and of course balancing a certain equation certain chemical reaction after that one um, I've already discussed to you what how to balance a certain chemical reaction we've already do that one so that's why um, it is a review for you to measure or for you to refresh your mind about chemistry because before going to analytical chemistry you have to know first the foundation of analytical chemistry which is chemistry itself there are many approaches to studying chemistry but for convenience we traditionally divide it into five fields that's why I've said that that um, chemistry has its own discipline has its own branches or has, has its own field and what are those we have organic inorganic physical biochemical and analytical chemistry I did not uh, 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 did not uh, mention a while ago the biochemis uh, biochemical but biochemical or biochemistry is including on the field or the branches or the discipline in chemistry so when we say biochemistry we already know that one from the from the word itself bio which life pertaining on the measurement or uh, pertaining on the chemicals or chemicals in the life that we have what are those of course biochemicals or biochemistry is focused on the macromolecules inside our body so what are those we have carbohydrates protein lipids um, nucleic acid and DNA of course that is included in biochemicals so we were you've already encountered that one after analytical chemistry so probably if um, I will be the one to 
be your teacher again with biochemistry because it's it is pre prerequisite again with the subject itself so although this division is historical and arbitrary as witnessed by the current interest in interdisciplinary areas such as bioanalytical and organometallic chemistry, this five fields remains the simplest division. Spanning the discipline of chemistry, training in each of these fields provides a unique per unique perspectives to the study of chemistry. So with this statement, it explains further that even though there is a five fields, it's, it is explained as, or it is uh, we can compare it to the simplest division. This this one is divided for us to know the different areas in chemistry. That is very important to know the areas of chemistry. Because when we see the field of chemistry, it is very broad and very deep. All of that has its own division, has, has its own areas. We will be focusing on different areas in a different discipline. That's why it's so-called discipline and branch because we will be tackling about its own area. So that's why there is analytical, biochemical, inorganic, and organic chemistry. So now let's proceed. So we're, we've already done uh, discussing the review pertaining to chemistry. So now let's proceed on defining what is analytical chemistry. So literally in the statement, it is the science of inventing and applying the concepts, principles, and strategies for measuring the characteristics of chemical system as species. As I've said a while ago that when we say analytical chemistry, it is pertaining on how can we measure a certain reagent, on how can we calculate a certain experiment. That's why analytical chemistry said or question about has its own questions about what, where, and how much. Because in analytical chemistry, that question that you've encountered like what, where, and how much, you will be answered that one by the means of analytical chemistry. Because we can answer what and where and how much if we know how to deal with this kind of area. So always remember that um, this um, field of area of discipline in chemistry is pertaining on answering the question what, where, and how much pertaining on the composition of each chemicals. Not only the composition, because we're we're trying to ask how much, meaning to say, we're trying to do also to know the measurements or how to be measured or how to measure a certain reagent, okay? So that is analytical chemistry. Very simple, very concise with the, with the, with the definition itself. If you have a question, you can ask me in our GC, okay? Let's proceed to uh, the next slide. Of course, on dealing analytical chemistry, we cannot say that it is only the definition. Of course, we, we will be knowing, we will be dealing with the methodology or the strategies of analytical chemistry. There is classic, classical qualitative methods. What are this one? It is used in the separation techniques. What are those? There are three separation techniques pertaining to the classical qualitative methods. What are those? Precipitation, extraction, and distillation. On the next slide, or on this uh, uh, discussion, we will be talking about this three method or these three processes. Identification may be based on differences in color, odor, melting, boi boiling point, excuse me, solubility, radioactivity, or reactivity. So by this statement, we can you can definitely know what is qualitative method. Meaning to say you are pertaining on the quality itself of the chemicals quality of a certain substance and how can you know the quality of the certain substance of course but the different types or methodology that we have by the use of the process of melting point color odor boiling point and solubility even the radioactivity or reactivity can explain what is quality what is qualitative methods so with that we can define or we can know what is the process of this method always remember qualitative method pertaining to the quality it's answer your color odor melting point boiling point solubility radioactivity or even reactivity so always take down that always take note with that and always remember that one and with that in the use of separation techniques, we also have these three processes. 
separation techniques, we have precipitation again. Of course, but when we say with this process, as we all know, we've already encountered it with a different field or discipline in chemistry. When we say precipitation, it is actually the formation of separable solid substance from the solution or either by converting the substance into an insoluble form by changing the composition of the solvent to diminish the solubility of the substance itself. So, how does precipitate in how do you make or how does can we make um precipitate in analytical chemistry basically the sample of the interest is dissolved in the solvent commonly water to give an aqueous solution an excess of the precipitation agent is then added to the aqueous solution so that means a precipitate should be formed so basically precipitation can be done inside the laboratory so we will be we will be knowing that one further in our uh, future experimentation. So, don't worry because today, um, uh, COVID-19 is a cliff in our community. So, basically, we can have a face-to-face -face laboratory. Okay, next. Next process is called extraction. So, what do you mean by this one? So basically, in analytical chemistry, extraction explains the concept of pertaining to the field, which is analytical chemistry, based on the transfer of the target of analyte from one phase to the different phase where further processing as a analysis occurs. So what do you mean by analyte or what is this called analyte? So basically, when we say analyte, it is a subject whose chemical constituents are being identified and measured. So in the means of extraction, there is so-called a substance na that being measured or being identified. And in that substance, the target in extraction basically is to transfer that substance to one phase to different phase where further processing occurs by analyzation so that means the process which is extraction next process in qualitative methods is distillation so what do you mean by distillation in the process of analytical chemistry so basically when you say distillation in the field of analytical chemistry it is the technique of heating okay from the word it's up distill heating a liquid to create a vapor which is collective when cooled separate from the original liquid so meaning to say when we say the process distillation it is based on the different boiling point or volatility values of a certain components so it will depend on how the process of heating will occur so it will be depending on the heating process so that is the process distillation so that's make the methods called qualitative always remember when we say qualitative it is pertaining on the quality of the substance or the quality of the chemical how can you do that by identifying the color the odor the physical appearance of the substance even the process itself like melting and boiling point so we can identify it by doing such processes okay of course if there is a qualitative method there is also called as quantitative methods if we say quantitative methods it is basically from the word quantity if we are pertaining to quantity meaning meaning it involves measurement it involves calculation it involves formulas from the word itself quantity we are dealing with numbers so with that it is used for mass or volume changes to quantify the amount of a certain chemical or a certain reagent so what are those types of quantitative analysis or uh, no 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 quantitative methods methodology sorry we have gravi gav, gravi uh, sorry with the pronunci pronunciation gravimetric analysis and volumetric analysis so there is two analysis that being discussed in this method and by that we are dealing with the question how much that's why i've said that analytical chemistry is not only what where but also identify the amount 
That's why the question would be how much. Okay? So, in quantitative methods, it will be dealing or focusing on the amount, on the number, answering the question, how much is it? Okay? So, let's move forward. And of course, aside from quantitative, okay, let's define or let's give the differences between quantitative and qualitative. When we say qualitative, it is pertaining to quality. It can, it can be answerable by the order, the color, the reactivity, the radioactivity, even the melting point and boiling point can be answered by this method. Second would be quantitative method. When we say quantitative from the word quantity, meaning to say it deals with the numbers, amount, uses in the mass and volume. So it can be answerable with the question how much. And of course, the next one would be the instrumental method. Instrumental method is the newer, faster, more efficient, and more accurate and sensi sensitive than simple chemical tests. So, why? Because that's why it's called instrumental methods. Because you will be dealing, you will be using different types of instrument. What are those? Of course, number one in the list, we have sp spectroscopy or mass spectroscopy. Electron analytical methods calorimetry and thermogravimetric analysis and of course microscopy so in this type of or in this list of instrumental methods the number one that is we are used to or we know very particularly in this uh, area is microscopy i know in your different major microscopy is being defined is being tackled so i know already and i assume that in microscopy you mastered all of the parts and you mastered the types and also you mastered how to use microscopy because that is the number one is instrument that you will be using in your future career okay always remember that one so, yeah let's proceed to another slide so now let's define what is spectroscopy so as you can see this is an illustration defining or describing the physical appearance of spectroscopy so that so let's explain it further so when we say spectroscopy it is actually a type of instrumental method that that describe as the study of the absorption and emission of light and other radiation by matter so meaning to say it involves some uh, some splitting of light or more precisely an electromagnetic radiation so take note with that when we say spect spectroscopy it is a study basically of the absorption and emission of the light and other radiation by matter so, to be specific, it involves on splitting of light. And in the precision, or to be precise, or more precisely, it is particularly on electromagnetic radiation. Okay? It is into constituents wavelength, a spectrum, which is basically can be done in the same way as prism or splits of lights. So that's why, as you can see, the rays of the different colors here, the different lightning. So that explains what is spectroscopy. So with that, also let's discuss what is electroanalytical method. So that is spectroscopy. Huh? Always remember my explanation with that. Two general cate categories of electroanalytical methods are potentiometric system and voltammetric system. So, let's focus on discussion what is poti potentiometric system. So, in potentiometric system, it is basically explained as the measure of voltage of galvan galvanic cell. So, potential. It is measure of vo voltage um, and of a galvanic cell. So, it produces electricity uh, spontaneously. So, to be exact, to explain it more further, when we say potentiometric system, it is usually employed to find the concentration of a solute in a solution. So, we already know what is a solute, right? So, in potentiometric measurement, 
The potential between two electrodes is measured using a high ep evidence voltmeter. That is why it is uh, uses a voltmeter kasi bakit? Potentiometric system is measured by voltage. Next to potentiometric system, we also have voltammetric system. So, voltammetric system or voltammetry to be exact is an electrochemical technique in which a varying potential is applied to a working electrode. So, that's why it's it said in the statement, it's control potential and usually measure a current in an electrolytic cell consumed by power to cause an electrochemical reaction to occur. So, that's why when we say voltammetric system, it is focusing on controlling or varying potential that is being applied in working an electrode. Okay? So, that is voltammetric system. So, it has a, a big differences between the two gen general categories. Why? Because in potentiometric system, it is focusing on the measuring of voltage. While in the voltammetric system, it's focusing on the use, on how we control a central potential and usually measure a current in electrolytic cell. Or it, is, uh, it can be varies on the potential that being applied in a certain working electrode. Okay? Always remember that one. So if you have question clarification, you can ask me in our GC. Let's proceed. So this is potentiometry illustration. So an electroanalytical method used to determine solution concentration by potential measurement. So potentiometry, we need to say it is focused on determining the solution based on the concentration by potential measurement. So as you can see the illustration, yeah. Okay, there is a, basically, it, it's divided into two tests. We have test electrode and reference electrodes. So, in our laboratory, we will be dealing with this. Okay, let's proceed. So, this is another example of potentiometer. Okay, so as you can see, there are different charges that being illustrated in here. And the output, the output or the result of that. Okay, this is basically the the instrument itself. Okay, the operational amplifier integrated circuit. Okay, so I will not uh, digging deep with the explanation with this because on our laboratory, we will be dealing with the different instrument. Okay, so uh, let's proceed now. We have already done discussing spectroscopy or electromagnetic radiation or even the electroanalytical um um, analytical aspect pertaining under two categories which is potentiometric and the voltammetric system so now let's go on the calometry so calometry is the process of me measuring the amount of heat releasing or absorbing during a chemical reaction so this is very simple uh, simple way of of measuring an amount of heat because basically in this kind of process you will be focusing on the heat that being consumed or being released or even being absorbed by or during in the chemical reaction. So, this is calorimetry. So, there is no, you will be me measuring how much is the heat that being released and how much is the heat that being absorbed. So, that is the process called calorimetry. Next. Next, we have microscopy. As I've said, microscopy is the very easiest uh, instrumental method because I know, I assume that you've already mastered this one. Why? Because, why? Because as a future medical technologies or even a, in a medical field, micro, microscope is the one instrument that is very important. Why? It is very useful because you will be dealing with the uh, fluids with the microorganism that you will be testing and as we all know we cannot see that it in our naked eye so we will be using microscopy and in analytical chemistry you will be dealing also with this kind of instrument so i know this is very simple to you so in the picture this is a simple microscope okay 
simple microscope is can be used with the help of the sunlight as the light or the energy passes to your specimen so that you can view or you can visual you can visual or you can view the visual of the, the kind of the specimen okay let's proceed so any question clarification so far so if you have you can ask it in rgc or you can direct message me okay let's proceed so let's proceed to the analytical perspective of analytical chemistry of course there are two approaches or there are there are there are two types of analytical perspective it will definitely begin with analytical approach because uh, before you will start to solve a problem you will know first what is this kind of analytical approach so with that let's discuss the steps on answering or solving a certain problem by using what by using analytical approach okay let's start now on very first one which is let's identify the problem so in identifying the problem you will be determining the type of inter information needed if, if it is a qual quantitative if it is qualitative characterization or even fundamentals okay so what do you mean what how can we how can we know that if the the certain problem is in the qualitative or is in the quantitative or even in characterization or even in fundamentals so by that we can answer that one in the next slide so this is the representation of the steps aside from identifying the problem we also have to design the experimental procedure propose a solution and analyze the experiment data and afterwards you have to conduct the experiment so with that let's explain first the how can you identify the problem in identifying the problem you have a need of information so with that identifying the problem is divided into four analysis we have qualitative quantitative and characterization and of course the fundamental analysis so let's proceed first on identifying what is qualitative analysis qualitative analysis is one of the very easiest analysis why because you will be determining the identity of the constituent species in a sample um, example one of the example is your analysis or the application screening an athlete urine for presence of a performance enhancing a drug is an example of quality qualitative analysis meaning to say you are identifying or you are ident or you are identifying the quality of a certain process so in this uh in this um um what they call this in this phrase uh, screening an athlete urine for the presence of the perf performance enhancing a drug you eventually know the quality of the different urine in screening the athletes okay so quality so to sum up it to be exact to simplify what is qualitative analysis qualitative analysis can be answered on the different type like for example the color the other as i've said a while ago it is the same with the qualitative uh, method if that process undergo with the color other melting point the boiling point you are now and identifying the qualitative analysis what is the quality ano yung itsura there is uh, involvement of the color there is involvement of the other if the statement has the involvement of the different types of it or different statement or different process of it it is qualitative analysis okay like for example the screening an athlete urine for the presence of of their performance in screening a urine you can eventually know what is the other the color of it so basically this kind of statement is in qualitative analysis you are identifying the appearance of a certain substance or a certain chemical okay so that is qualitative analysis next so this is the three types of your analysis so of course your analysis can be undergo inside the laboratory so i will not be explaining it furthermore because 
this is actually an example or representation on qualitative analysis. Next, we have quantitative analysis. If qualitative analysis is pertaining to identifying or identity or the appearance of a certain substances, quantitative analysis is pertaining to what? To the number, amount. If there is so-called measurement, if there is an involvement of the amount of the substance, this is in the quantitative analysis. Answerable by the, que by the question, how much? So example of it, measuring the concentration of a glucose in a blood. So this is a menu keyword na dito, oh, measuring. So meaning to say, it is involved in the quantitative analysis. Next we have hmm, this one. This chart is uh, the representation of quantitative analysis. There, this, there is the involvement of the numbers or the amount of the different substance. Okay? Next, characterization analysis. When we say characterization analysis, it is, it is analysis in which we evaluate samples, chemical, or physical properties. So, meaning to say, it has, a, it has an involvement of the constant, equilibrium constant, particle size, and, or even the surface structure. So, characterization analysis is pertaining to the determination of chemical structure, pertaining to their equilibrium constant, particle size, and surface structure. A good example of characterization analysis is um, what is the question, what was the, uh, the substance made of? Kung ano yung, ano yung process, uh, ay, kung ano yung nagbubuo sa substance, or what does the blood make red? Okay? Meaning to say, you are undergoing the, with the composition of the substance, not only the composition of it. You will be undergoing also with the particle size and also with the surface of the structure. So, kung ano yung ginawa or kung ano yung, ano yung proseso sa paggawa, sa pagbuo ng certain substance, yan ang characterization analysis. So, to give you a good example, this one, this is the chemistry of different colors of blood. So, how does uh, blood uh, makes red? Or what are those compositions that the blood will make red? So, this is one. This is the cl character, car uh, classification. If it is red, it is human. If it is blue, it is spiders. If it is green, it is some worms. If it is violet, it is from marine, including peanut worms. So, that explains what is characterization analysis. So, if you have question clarification, you can, you can ask it in our GC. Always remember that uh, characterization analysis is pertaining on the composition. Composition, particle size, and the surface structure of a certain substance. Next, we have the fundamental analysis. When we say fundamental analysis, this is the purpose of the improvement of analytical methods capabilities. Extending and improving the theory on which the method is based. Studying a method's limitation and designing new and modifying old methods. Meaning to say, when we say fundamental analysis, there is being there is a changing of the new discoveries to an old uh, to uh, there, there is a changes between the old discoveries to a new discoveries. Meaning to say, in the statement of fundamental analysis, if there is a new discovery itself, that is called fundamental analysis. Kapag may bago, if it is resulting to a new one. Right? Right. So that is fundamental analysis. Always look for a keyword new. Discovery. Yan. Kapag may bago. So that is fundamental analysis. So let's proceed. Chemotherapy is one of the example of fundamental analysis. Okay? So check your understanding. So now identify if it is qualitative, quantitative, characterization, and fundamental. So I want you to answer this one in our... GC. If the statement is qualitative, quantitative, characterization, or even fundamental. Okay? Just uh, type your answer there. Then basically, I will be checking it one by one. Okay? So, speed of light. 200, uh, 
speed of light 299,792 km per second. So what do you think is it this kind of analysis? Quantitative, qualitative, characterization, or even fundamentals. Next, water contamination. So what do you think is this one? It is in qualitative. It is in a, it is in the quantitative characterization or even in fundamental. You have to answer that one in our GC. How about this one? The invention, new discovery, new design for the extraction of lipid from solid material. What is it? Fundamental, qualitative, quantitative, or even characterization. So you have to answer this one. Next, fat oil chemical structure. Structure. Okay, keyword chemical structure. So what is in this uh, uh, process? It is in quantitative ba, qualitative ba, characterization, or even in fundamental. Next, we have a, a statement. A gold, a gold, sorry, a gold is least reactive chemical element, slightly reddish yellow, dense, soft, malleable, and ductile metal. As you can see, the highlighted uh, the phrase there. This this is the the keyword. By by reading this one, you will know if it is a quantitative, qualitative, characterization, or fundamentals. It is very simple, right? Napakadali lang. Okay. So, another part on the steps in analytical approach on how to solve a problem is designing an experimental procedure. Of course, after... After, ha, after identifying the problem, you will be designing a certain experimental procedure. So, by that, you will be establishing design criteria. You will be dealing with the accuracy, precision, scale, or even the operation, sensitivity, selectivity, and cost speed. To explain it, fa to explain it further, the statement below are the factors that can establish the criteria or the design in experimental procedure. So, it is constant, ha? Ito lang yung gagamitan ninyo on how to design a certain experimental procedure. So, what are those? Identify the interference, select methods, establish validation criteria, and also establish sampling strategy. So, this uh, this was, uh, this are the statement that to be um, used in designing an experimental procedure. It is actually a factor lang to be considered. Okay? Moving forward, it involves selecting an appropriate method of analysis based on establishing a criteria such as accuracy, precision, sensitivity, and de detection limit. So, as we all know that uh, we already know, we've already encountered some of the terminology, like for example, accuracy, precision, and even the sensitivity, and of course, the detection of the limit. We've already know what are those um, words. So, in the designing of the experimental, uh, experimental, experimental procedure, we will be considering this kind of term. So, gagamitin ito. So, aside from that, the, urgen the urgency with which results are needed is also important in identifying that, in designing, sorry, an experimental procedure. Not only that, the cost, the cost of the single analysis can be also considered with the factors and the number of the sample to be analyzed and, of course, the amount of sample available for analysis. So, that are... Those statements are factors that we can consider on designing the experimental procedure. Always remember that statement and the different terminologies that being used. Okay? Let's proceed. So, after you design the experimental procedure, we will be conducting the experiment. So, how can you conduct the experiment? By calibrate instruments and equipment. Of course, you will be using equipments and instruments by conducting experiment. Next, standard reagent. And of course, if you have the use of the specific instrument or tool, then you have your so-called standard reagent or chemicals. 
you can gather now your data. Okay? So, every exper uh, every uh, analytical approach by sol uh, which can solve a certain problems, there is a certain chemicals that being used. There is also a specific tools that be used depending on the chemicals that that uses in that kind of approach. Okay. So that is conduct an experiment. Always remember that conduct an experiment can be done by using a tool, an equipment, and also by testing the certain chemical and a certain reagent that you have. Okay? So, and afterwards, you will be gathering your data. Okay, let's proceed. On analyzing the experimental data, meaning to say, after you gathered your data by conducting the experiment, you will now analyze it. So, what is the very first one to analyze a certain data? You have to reduce and transform your data. Okay, reduce, eventually your data, meron jang hindi naman kailangan, least to have this kind of data, or change transform to another uh, statement to another specific answer of that data pwede yon pwede you have to change it to another amount kasi nagkamali because the specific amount is this one so you have you can reduce or transform the data next analyze the statistics statistics the probability that the amount of the substance is this one the accuracy or the precision of the amount of the substance is correct. So you have to analyze it further. The next one, you have to verify your own result. Okay. Hindi naman agad-agad that you can get your result by the means of um, analyzing its own amount or its own measurement. Not only by the statistics. Of course, you have to be considered with the result itself. So you have to verify it. So after you verify the result, that's the time you can interpret your result in interpreting the result there are different uh, factors to be considered you cannot interpret your result if you cannot if you did not undergo with a different analysis analysis pertaining to your experimental data okay you cannot go you cannot jump into inter in, to, to, in, to interpret your result or you cannot jump to the stage or the level in which you have to interpret the result by not going to reduce or transform the data, analyze the statistics, or even verify your result. You cannot jump into any specification or into interpreting the result if you did not undergo with the reducing or transforming data. Okay? Always remember that one. So let's proceed. So of course, if you're now uh, done interpreting your solution, I don't know, your results itself, you can propose your solution. Conduct an external evaluation. Of course, in the conducting external uh, solution, uh, external evaluation, sorry, it is not easy to conduct it. Again naman, as I've said, you cannot jump into any specification, into any result, if you will not undergo with the first step. So, it is step-by-step -step process to look for an answer, to look for a conduct external evaluation. So, when a solution is being proposed, the results are subject to an external evaluation that may result in a new problem and the beginning of a new analytical cycle. So, it's like a cycle lang. After you propose, after you conduct the evaluation, then eventually, if it is good, then you can... You can, you can have it. But if it is not inaccurate, inaccurate, or it, if it is not precise, you can go back to the cycle. You can go back to the analytical cycle. So that is the l yes. That is the last part of the analytical approach pertaining to how to solve a certain problem in analytical chemistry okay so that's why i have here a feedback loop action to the effect so if the effect is not in accurate or precise you can 
you can go back to the first step. Okay? It's like a cycle. It's like a vice versa. You can go back kapag hindi natagumpayan yung result. You can go back if there is a locking with the result. Pwede balikan. As long as you know the step, as long as you know the factors, you can change your result. You can undergo with a cycle na pwedeng ulitin ang steps. Okay? Always remember that one. Any question clarification with regards to the discussion for this morning? So, I think there is no more question because uh, if there is a question, you can raise it in our GC or even direct message me. I hope you understand our first lesson for the, for analytical chemistry. So, I hope that we can make a virtual na in our next lesson. So, thank you very much. Have a safe day and have a, uh, have a nice day ahead of you, guys. And always remember that if it's not important to go out, just stay at home, okay? To lessen, of course, the COVID-19, um, spreading of COVID-19. Thank you very much and bye-bye.